with yet another video and this one's going to be on motor mecha mechanisms and I'm going to specifically focus in on the skeletal system and the muscle muscular system. Now when we talk about muscles there are three types of muscles. There can be skeletal muscle, cardiac muscle, and smooth muscle and they have slight differences in each one. Skeletal muscle is voluntary which means that we control its movement. I can't go up and slap somebody and say I didn't have any control over it because it's actually voluntary. It's striated. The striations are created by these sarcomeres which have both actin and myosin fib fibers in them and it's multinucleated. Now cardiac muscle is your heart muscle of course and it's involuntary. We don't have to think about how it beats every time. It's striated. It's autorhythmic which means the sinoatrial node controls its beating. Um, smooth muscles, the last one, is involuntary as well, and it's non-striated, and it's like our digestive system, our arteries and veins. Now, so we have two that are involuntary, the cardiac and the smooth, two that are striated, the skeletal and the cardiac, so they have some differences among all of them. Now, when we talk about the human skeleton, the endoskeleton, if you will, it has 206 bones. Something interesting about that is you're actually born with 213 bones, but some of these bones fuse together after birth, like in our skull and in, in our butt region. Um, so we only have 206 whenever we leave this earth. Now there's different types of joints. There's a ball and socket joint, like in our shoulder. There is a hinge joint, like in our elbow. And there's a pivot joint, like in our neck. Uh, so we have different types of joints. Um, now, we talk let's specifically focus in on muscle movement. Muscles do work by contracting. They're, they're always in antagonistic pairs. There's a flexor and an extensor. Our flexor would be like our bicep. It's what pulls our arm closer to her. An extensor would be like our tricep, which makes our stretch our arm out. Uh, so we got a contracting and sh or shortening and then uh, an extension. There are two types of connections between muscles. You can have a connection between um, bone and muscle, which would be a tendon. I always think about the Achilles tendon connecting my calf muscle to my heel bone. And ligaments would be a connection between bone and bone, like your ACL. Now, if you look on this picture here, it gives you a better example of flexors are like the hamstring and extensors are like the quadriceps. So you can kind of see how that works. Now, the structure of a striated skeletal muscle is one we'll talk about in the muscle fibers. They're divided into sections called sarcomeres, and you can see a sarcomere right down here. Sarcomere has alternating bands, that's what gives it striations, and these alternating bands are of actin and myosin, which are two types of protein filaments, and they're actually what work simultaneously to, or work together in order to make the muscle contract. Now here's a blown up view of a sarcomere. Now the thin filaments are usually referred to as actin, and the thicker filaments are myosin. If you'll notice the myosin, has little heads on it. You can see these little heads it has on each side. These heads are going to be used to grab hold of the actin and they'll actually slide these filaments in and out, you know, relaxing and contracting. Now, here's a better example of what I, what I showed you. The first picture up here shows you whenever it is relaxed and the bottom picture shows you the contracting and the shortening of it and it's controlled by these mice and heads. Now, of course, we need ATP in order to do this, and ATP is actually found in the mice and head, which you can see here, all right? And this ATP is gonna be used to bind the mice into the actin, and then that forms a cross bridge here, and when it does, that mice and head is going to flip the fiber this way, the shortening of the sarcomere. And of course, this requires ATP in order to do it. Now, when the muscle is at rest, you have troponin, which is molecules that hold tropomyosin fibers so that they cover the myosin binding site, so they don't bind to the actin, so the muscle lays resting. But then, what happens is you're going to have motor neurons are going to trigger acetylcholine, which is a neurotransmitter, which we talked about in last uh, video, and it's going to trigger acetylcholamine to be released, which in turn causes calcium to be released. And that calcium then binds to the tropamine, which opens the binding site so the myosin and the actin can actually bind together and the whole process can start. So that leads us to what's called the sliding filament model. And it's called the sliding filament model because the, the myosin heads act kind of like a ratchet. They'll reach out and grab the actin and pull it in kind of a motion pull it one way or the other. It acts as a ratchet system. 
and it's controlled by the, this calcium. Whenever the calcium is is bound to the tropin, then the tropin releases the tropomycin, which allows the myosin head to bind to the actin binds, myosin, uh, binding site. Whenever calcium is released or, or taken away, let's say by active transport, then that tropin covers up the tropomycin, which covers up the binding site, so it's in this resting state. And this is kind of the summary of it all right here. If you'll look, this is a neuron or the end of a neuron. It releases neuro, uh, acetylcholamine, which is a neurotransmitter, which causes the action potential to go down, which goes into the sarco, um, sarcoreticulum region, which causes it to release calcium. This is calcium, these green things. Um, I guess it's plus two. Uh, release calcium. This calcium then binds here, which allows the myosin head to attach to the actin. ATP allows for that to move this entire structure. And then the calcium is taken away, which allows it to go back to its resting state. So it's kind of like a cycle there, right? Um, now, that's, this is basically what I've talked about, but it needs, it needs energy or ATP for this entire process to go. And we get energy from the things that we eat. Now, there are two types of muscle fibers. There's fast twitch and slow twitch. Slow twitch muscle fibers are the dark meat. And they do not ratchet as quickly as the fast twitch muscles. Um, long distance runners want slow twitch muscles. They, they're going to have more mitochondria for aerobic respiration and they're going to keep going for a very long time. They're going to drag slowly. Fast twitch muscles, a lot of times in, in like football, we, we try to develop fast twitch muscles for explosion. Uh, but they get tired very rapidly. Uh, they store glycogen for anaerobic respiration because they're going to need it because they, they, they go so fast. That'd be like a sprinter. Um, and that's like the white meat on the chicken is fast twitch muscles. Now, when we talk about muscle fatigue, you know, all of us have been tired like the guy over here on the right. It just means it lacks sugar or it lacks ATP. And if you lack ATP, you can't restore the calcium gradient. If you can't restore the calcium gradient, Sometimes you'll get a contraction that stays there for a while, or you can't contract at all. Um, low oxygen could also cause muscle fatigue because the lactic acid drops the pH and interferes with, with our protein function. And then you may have synaptic fatigue, you know, acetylcholamine. You may have a loss of it or something taking its place. Muscle cramps, we've all experienced those before. Um, this is another limit of muscles in which it builds up of lactic acid. You know, ATP is gone. Ion imbalances there, and you know, usually if you stretch or massage, you can get the cramp out. Hopefully, now we do have some diseases where muscle tissue is affected. Uh, ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease is one where the motor neurons slowly deteriorate, which causes loss of movement, of course. Uh, then you have what Stephen Hawkins has, he's probably the most famous. Uh, bless me if I say it right, uh, myasthenia gravis which is an autoimmune disease. The antibodies are actually attacking the acetylcholamine receptors. And because the acetylcholamine is not working properly, then the muscles are not going to work properly. Uh, the last little thing I wanted to mention was something like rigor mortis. Now, I'll just go through these steps here. So why are dead people stiffs? Uh, because no life means no breathing. No breathing means no oxygen. No oxygen means no aerobic respiration. No aerobic respiration means no ATP. No ATP, you have no calcium pump, no calcium... Uh, uh, calcium stays in the muscle. <clears throat> Cytoplasm, therefore the muscle fibers are going to continually contract. They're going to stay tense. Uh, it's called tetany or rigor mortis. Eventually the tissues will break down and relax. And this is how they actually measure how long someone has been dead <coughs> by how much rigor mortis they have. So I just thought that was interesting. Anyway, hope you guys have a wonderful day and I will talk to you very soon.